One of the biggest complaints and downfalls of electric vehicles is the amount of time that you need to charge it. To supercharge your Tesla can take anywhere from 25 minutes to up to an hour, depending on your state of charge and your vehicle, whereas just going to the gas station only takes about five minutes. And while there's various implementations of technologies that are coming out by Tesla and other electric car manufacturers in order to speed up that time, the key question remains, what do you do during that time? And now I'm here with the obvious answer to that question, and I'm surprised it hasn't been answered sooner, video games. You play video games while you're waiting and your car is charging. Tesla has figured this out. They are bringing out PS5-like hardware to their upcoming Model S and Model X refresh. I wanted to see, could I find a different way to play video games in my Tesla while it's charging besides the stock ones that are included like Battle of Polytopia, Fallout Shelter, or Stardew Valley is a great game, so is Cuphead, but it's not to the level of the AAA experience that I've been looking for. And I could do something like bring a gaming laptop or set up a full computer in my Tesla, which I've actually already done a video of installing a full gaming PC in a car before, but no, we're going to go with cloud streaming. Finally get to share Google's vision for the future of games. Thankfully, because Teslas have a web browser in the car baked in already, there are some things that you can do to get around limitations that are implemented by hardware. You see that GeForce Now isn't supported and neither is Google Stadia, but Microsoft just launched their browser-based support for Project xCloud. And based on the brief test at home, it at least pops up as if it's technically supported. I waited until this video to see if we could actually get it running and the extent that we'd be able to play video games in the Tesla. As you can see, the xCloud gaming service is connected to Game Pass, so there are a whole host of video games that you can attach everything to. And because Tesla already has a native arcade support, all you have to do is plug in your hot news controller to the USB under the center console, and then you have control of whatever game you're gonna play. The one thing to note though is that even though I'm trying to do this at a supercharger is that when you use the web browser if you put the car into drive the web browser still stays active so you can do things on the browser even while the car is driving and none of the actual information that you need for driving is taken up by this section all of it's right here including navigation information will pop up right here instead of having it on the larger section of the screen so that is actually really useful not for the driver to play video games but but rather for the passenger. My family and I are gonna have to make a trip up to Pennsylvania shortly, and it's gonna take us 15, 16 hours to do that. If I could potentially play control during that trip and my wife can drive the car, well, then I could have a much better experience being a passenger of this Tesla. Let's start off probably with the most obvious Forza Horizon 4. Let's see if we can get some racing going. I have no idea if the audio is going to work. I have no idea what the latency is like. The audio does work, oh my goodness. You see we have full bars of LT. This is probably the best that you're gonna do. No, oh, we can already see that the latency is kinda rough. Yeah, we're getting a network latency issue right up there. Oh, this is rough. Oh, this is bad. All right, oh, the controller's working. It's, this is working. Oh, oh, sweet latency. The game looks good. Um, it's just not connecting well enough for me to enjoy this at all. There is a multi-second lag that's currently going on. Oh, this is bad. And the game's like glitching. Oh, this is rough. Oh, sweet Susie. Oh man, I, I doubt it's the game, but let's, let's try a different one because that is unplayable. Let's try a platformer like Ori. But what's not as bad of an experience as me playing xCloud on my Tesla is today's video sponsor, The Ridge. You think Teslas are sleek and minimal with their interior? Well, the Ridge is essentially the wallet equivalent of that. The Ridge wallet's light, it's sleek, it's industrial. It doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge in your back pocket, and it seriously has changed my whole pocket situation, especially sitting for long car rides. I don't even notice it's in my back pocket, but it's also front pocket compatible. Most people are still using wallets designed in the 90s, carry around all their old receipts, etc., in a huge unorganized mess. The Ridge wallet helps to make sure that you can't, you don't don't even have room for that so it's just gonna keep you slimmed down you can't have a George Costanza wallet anymore it holds up to 12 cards plus room for cash and there's over 30 colors and styles including carbon fiber and burnt titanium and my personal favorite the matte white if that's not enough they have over 40,000 five-star reviews and the durable material means that each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty you could buy this one wallet and carry it for life the Ridge team is so confident in their wallet and think that you'll like it that they'll let you test drive 
have it for 45 days and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's also made with RFID blocking technology that protects you from digital pickpocketers. You get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com forward slash UFD10 and using code UFD10 at checkout. Again, that's ridge.com forward slash UFD10 to get 10% off and free worldwide shipping and returns. Big thanks to The Ridge for sponsoring today's video. The intro screen looks smooth. Oh no, this is the same issue. If the audio is lagging, you know you're gonna have a bad time, especially on a fast paced platformer like Ori. Oh, sweet Suze, so oh, this is, this is multiple seconds. I'm gonna hit the up button to go to start game. That was like a good three seconds. That is not pleasant in the slightest. Oh man. Question I have though, is while it might not work for faster paced games or action games like that, could we get something like a turn-based strategy game, something like Civilization that would be a little bit better? Because when you think about it, cloud gaming services aren't supposed to be for the fast paced games. They're more for the stuff that aren't latency sensitive. Although most of these would feel terrible on this internet connection. We could play Fallout 76, hell yeah. I mean, the state of the internet that I'm playing on is basically the state of the game. So it, it would feel like the exact same experience. Now go back, I actually don't wanna play Fallout, please leave me alone. You can see that they have a huge selection of games if you can get the internet working on it. Let's say you have Wi-Fi, Grand Theft Auto 5, you have Halo 5, you also have Hellblade, some newest sacrifice. There's plenty of legitimate games that are available on xCloud. I'm not finding any game near Automata. I'm not seeing any game that might work for us on this situation. That's all right, I have a secondary plan. While we are not getting good internet connection, even with full LTE, I am aware of the fact that the strength of signal doesn't necessarily correlate to the latency of the signal that you have. So instead of trying to go off of Tesla's Wi-Fi, I'm gonna turn on the hotspot for my phone as I'm currently connected to 5G. We'll try to see if we get any better latency using my iPhone. Okay, hotspot connected, I'll keep my phone out in the open for the best connection possible. And now let's go back to Forza and see if that is a better experience. Oh no, this loading screen's work. Oh poo, it's lagging. Oh, this is bad. 5G, you're supposed to be better. Man, I was really hoping that the internet would be good enough. I had full signal. I'm sitting here at a supercharger in Melbourne, Florida. I thought that this would be legitimately decent. I'm gonna say that this is a roughly worse experience on the 5G. Not much worse. It's not It's not like noticeably worse, but it's, it's just bad. This is not pleasant. The latency is not good. Oh boy, cloud gaming latency is not where we need it to be to play on the road in a Tesla. I couldn't imagine actually driving on the interstate and then thinking that this would be any better. I'm sitting here with full signal on my 5G, sitting here with full signal on my LTE. Maybe it's because we're in a city center and so there might be more congestion on the network introducing more latency, but this is, this is unpleasant. Oh man, this is bad. The proof of concept works. That's at least what I'm comfortable saying. So we're back to the Airbnb that I'm staying at because I wanted to just test out in a less congested portion of the network. I'm basically in suburban Melbourne, Florida at this point. Can I get a better connection? Uh, and will the latency be any better here? And initial thoughts are, it's, it's just as bad. It looks like Tesla's connection to the network it just has too much latency to make cloud streaming a thing. There are some indications that Tesla might be filing four millimeter wave certification on upcoming models. So they might have 5G support, but as it stands now, I believe the AT&T network that Tesla is using for their cars just isn't enough to support cloud gaming. So the easiest way that you're possibly gonna be able to game on a Tesla will be to spend $80,000 and pick up the model Model S refresh that's coming out sometime soon. That's a lot of nuts! Or be like that one dad and son pair and just bring your Oculus Quest to the supercharger. Cloud gaming on a Tesla, spectacularly bad. If anybody in my audience has the Tesla, why don't you try it out? Let me know. It does X Cloud work for you. It Proof of concept is there, just not the actual execution. I wanna hear your experiences down below in the comments. And you can also check out the video I mentioned earlier where I built an entire gaming PC back when Ryzen first launched and ran that off of a cigarette lighter in a car. It was really dangerous and stupid, but I was the passenger and I guess I would have gotten a face full of plastic at the time. I'll see you in the next video, friends. Cheers.